romance of Outlander drives a new tourism boom. The popular TV series has helped to attract ever more growing numbers of visitors to Scotland. Why Leadenborough has been a destination of choice for tourists for many years, and the Scottish capital continues to lure visitors all year round. More remote parts of Scotland are now seeing visitor numbers soar, with knock-on benefits to the entire economy. There are many reasons for Scotland's growing popularity with domestic and international visitors. These include the perceived safety of the country as a destination in light of terrorist attacks in other parts of the world, the outlander effect as the television series attracts millions of viewers, and the weakness of sterling, particularly in the run-up to Brexit. Links to Scottish airports have improved and the legacy of the 2014 Commonwealth Games continues to benefit Glasgow and surrounding areas. All of this means tourism is a booming industry at the moment, as Mark Crothall, chief executive of industry trade body Scottish Tourism Alliance, describes it. Tourism is the heartbeat of the Scottish economy. Malcolm Roughhead, chief executive of Visit Scotland, agrees, tourism is more than a holiday experience, it is integral to sustaining communities across Scotland by generating income, creating jobs and stimulating social change, and it generates around £11 billion of economic activity. He adds that, as a key growth sector of the Scottish economy, tourism is the driving force for providing the jobs of tomorrow. For every £60,000 spent by visitors, a new job is created in Scotland. And Roughhead points out that tourism also leads the economic transformation of regions through major developments such as the forthcoming opening of the V&A Dundee. Crothall says that while the industry directly employs 217,000 people, the indirect employment figure is much higher. The Scottish government clearly sees the value of attracting more tourists to Scotland, with the launch, in collaboration with Visit Scotland, Scottish Development International and Universities Scotland, in April of a £6 million campaign designed to attract more high-spending tourists, as well as migrant talent and overseas students. Part of the boom in tourism is driven by the increasing popularity of some of Scotland's best-known visitor attractions. Figures from the Association of Scottish Visitor Attractions ASVA, show that the number of people going to its member sites rose in 2017, for the fourth year running. Its annual visitor trends report revealed that more than 30 million visits were made to 232 of its member sites in Scotland in 2017, a rise of 9.7% on 2016. The two top sites, the National Museum of Scotland in Edinburgh and Edinburgh Castle, each attracted more than 2 million visits, the first time that any visitor attraction in Scotland has surpassed that milestone. Its survey identified the Outlander effect as benefiting several areas featured in the TV series, as well as other locations with Jacobite connections, such as Culloden Battlefield Visitor Centre, Glasgow Cathedral, Castle Fraser, and Glenfinnan Monument. Eva McDiarmid, chief executive of the ISVA, says, Edinburgh gets a disproportionate number of non-Scottish and non-domestic visitors. The additional air links have really made a difference over the past two or three years. When it comes to Glasgow, with such attractions as Kelvin Grove Art Gallery and the Riverside Museum, McDiarmid credits the legacy of 2014 Commonwealth Games in boosting the numbers of both domestic and overseas visitors. The Commonwealth Games seems to have been a bit of a watershed, she explains. What Glasgow put on in 2014 complemented the Games and it had a real buzz. It seems to have a knock-on effect for others places too. Since then, there has been a raised consciousness of what people have on their doorstep. The STA points to a number of factors behind the growth in international tourism in recent years. Crothall says, Scotland has enjoyed the benefit of the exchange rate which has had a real impact on growth in the international visitor market with the pound being weak. Scotland has become an attractive and very affordable destination for many, coupled with that we have seen tragedies around the world in respect of terrorism, while Scotland has, thankfully, been seen as a safe destination. Visitors, both domestic and overseas, are clearly not just coming to the central belt of Scotland, with the highlands and islands also on the rise for many reasons, from the popularity of traditional attractions such as golf and whiskey to the more recent success of the North Coast 500 marketing campaign. This is reflected in the high number of accolades the Highlands and Islands received at this year's Thistle Awards, the Oscars for the Tourism Industry. Craig Ewan, Chair of the Highlands and Islands Tourism Awards, HIDA, and General Manager of the King's Mills Hotel in Inverness, says, There's an absolute buzz in the Highlands and Islands. Many people have had one of the most successful years from a business point of view. I think this will be another exceptional year. Traditionally our US and international visitors were only coming during the summer months. That is changing. He explains, things like the value of the dollar against the pound make the UK a more attractive destination. From a security point of view, the Highlands and Islands is an attractive position. You're not going into big inner cities, you're coming to a relatively safe place. At Kings Mills, we're seeing more international golfers come to the region all the way through from April to October. He says that in 2017, 
Kinks Mills operated at just over 90% capacity for the entire year, its strongest performance. Reflecting confidence in the growth of Inverness as a destination, its owner Tony Story has bought other properties in the city to develop. Another reason for the growing popularity of the region is more people than ever going to whiskey distilleries, which attracted a record 1.7 million visitors in 2016, and the expansion of the Spirit of Speyside Festival in recent years. James Campbell, chair of Spirit of Speyside, says this year's festival, which runs from 3 to 7 May, has seen record sales, with almost 5,000 tickets snapped up within the first 24 hours of going on sale, generating £32,262 more in value than in 2017. Campbell says that visitors are coming from across the globe to the small pocket of Scotland with a radius of about 35 miles that is home to 50 whiskey distilleries, around half of Scotland's total. The top country for visitors to the festival is Germany, closely followed by the US and Scandinavia. Campbell says, the whiskey companies draw the visitors in the first place. People want to come and see where Glenfiddich is made, where Macallan is made. In year two, the reason they come back is the people they meet. It's such a small community and a very friendly festival. It's all about music, whiskey, food and fun. But given the geographical concentration of the festival Campbell admits that accommodation can be a quite a pinch. The economic impact of the festival is substantial and growing. Several years ago, the last time an analysis was carried out, it was pumping £1.4 million into the Speyside community over five days. With ticket sales at least doubling since then, Campbell estimates the benefit is now in the region of about £2 million. The success of food and drink tourism has been recognised and the STA is working with Scotland Food and Drink to devise a sector-specific tourism strategy. But the tourism industry realises that it must continue to come up with innovative initiatives and tap into new markets to continue to grow. Given the aging population, and the potential value of the silver pound, elderly people form one such market. A senior visitors to visitor attractions project was run between December and February by Napier University's tourism specialists and Harriet Watt University with Interface, a Scottish government-backed service helping to connect businesses to academics. The project focused on researching and developing a new product offering for senior visitors, those over the age of 75, to a number of attractions in or near Edinburgh, including Camera Obscura, Rosslyn Chapel, Trinity House Maritime Museum, National Museum of Scotland and the War Poets Collection at Craig Lockhart. The project has put forward a number of recommendations to help visitor attractions meet the requirements of those aged 75 and over including the need to offer additional support for the elderly, such as carer support, staff awareness of needs, and pre-visit information on access and content. Developing clear communications relevant to this group is also important. Fiona Hutchison, a specialist on tourism at Interface, says, This is a great example of two universities coming together to work with a range of visitor attractions, both paid and free for entry, to look at the impact of bespoke programming on senior visitors and their well-being. Findings will help these and other attractions capitalize on creating viable and profitable program for audiences over 75 years. Looking to the future, can the boom in the Scottish tourism industry continue and what are the challenges it faces? Last year, the SDA published Confident or Concerned, a report on the factors affecting tourism businesses in Scotland. The overriding theme to emerge is that, despite the success of Scottish tourism, the industry has concerns about a broad range of issues. It identified a perfect storm of factors which would lead to rising business costs and falling profitability. Despite 63% of the industry being confident about the future, challenges include uncertainty around Brexit and the possibility of a second independence referendum, rising staff costs, increasing business rates, rising costs of food, drink and utilities, difficulties recruiting staff and local infrastructure struggling to cope with increased visitor numbers. Crowth all is largely optimistic but with notes of caution. He says, looking forward, the international market in particular is very strong. The attraction sector has had an exceptional performance and I believe that will continue. I think 2018 is going to be an okay year and hopefully more international visitors will come. But we have to take stock of what might lie ahead in 2019 depending on how things pan out over the next few weeks and months. Crowth all identifies the biggest potential headache for the industry as the ability to recruit skilled staff. He explains, the really big challenge we face is the skills gap and a shortage of people to be able to grow and service the aspirational volume of visitors of the future. We haven't got enough people in the right parts of the country and we have a skill shortage. It's about going right the way back to grassroots. We need to position working in tourism as a genuine career choice with real opportunities. We are trying to remove some of the narrow thoughts and understanding that a career in our industry is only about hotel and barkeeping. It's much more than that. This has to be a collaborative effort between the industry and the public and education sectors to amplify the importance of tourism. And, with Brexit around the corner, 
he believes Scotland has work to do. We have to make ourselves competitive and affordable and lower the levels of taxation that we're currently burdened with. Lowering tax would make us more competitive and affordable. Visit Scotland's rough head points to increasing concerns from the industry in relation to fears that EU nationals could be unable to work in the tourism sector, and the labour shortage this could create. He says, the contribution of EU workers to Scotland's tourism industry should be celebrated and reassurances should be given to them about their employment status. Also on the agenda for the tourism industry are measures to ensure the environment is protected for future generations of visitors and that businesses are proactive when it comes to sustainability. Hutchison says, the weather is always a favourite national topic of conversations. Scottish businesses face many long-term challenges as a result of climate change impacts, for example increased flood risk and more frequent extreme weather events. Businesses in the industry are also being encouraged to sign up to sustainable accreditation organisation, Green Tourism. As Roughhead says, the success of Scottish tourism rests not only on its economic competitiveness but also on protecting and enhancing the environment, society and culture, which are vital to the brand the industry and our ability to continue to attract visitors from around the world time and time again. Given that the continued success of Scottish tourism is core to the growth of the Scottish economy it seems to be of prime importance that, with the support of government and other public sector bodies, the industry rises to challenges such as a skills shortage, particularly in light of the UK leaving the EU.